Hey guys, what's up? My name is The Cool Mike and welcome back with another episode of Critical Role Review. So, with that being said, uh, if you guys didn't know what this is, this is my new series where I review uh, episodes from the new, uh, uh, from the, what you call, RPG uh, internet show called uh, Critical Role, which can be found on YouTube. Uh, every, th uh, every four days, I'll be reviewing uh, the episode of Critical Role, and if you want to watch the episode that I'm reviewing, I'll be leaving the link of that episode in the description down below so you can watch it. Without further ado, this is episode 3, so let's get started. So, uh, episode 3 is called Strange, uh, Strange Bedfellows. First, I'm going to be reading the summary and then I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and my, uh, what you call, uh, I'm going to be telling, uh, some, uh, I'm going to be uh, saying some, uh, some of my favorite scenes that I saw in the episode. So, here's the summary. With Grog's mind now silenced, the twins fall upon la uh, the last sur surviving Durigar. The Xalia possess their dwarven captive for information. The Durigar only laughs at the barbarian's plight and spits out warnings of the master that awaits them below before Baxter finally puts her out of her misery. After an easy night rest for the party and hours of meditation for Kilit, the druid is thankfully able to restore Grog's mind and that Vaxma cannot continue down through the great cavern they pass through, a gutted goblin village strewn with corpses and eventually spy another group of Durigar dragging along three dwarven captives. Scanlan and the twins whip out their flying carpet and tail the Durigar from afar over a thin creaking rope bridge. Scanlan disappears from sight and now invisible careful, carefully makes his way into a war camp teeming with dark dwarves, ogres, and trolls. There, there he bears witness to an illicit controlling all those around him, devouring the mind of one of those three dwarven miners. After catching, uh, cap after catching his companions, uh, uh, companions up, the group hatches a plan to lure their enemies into an illusion and drop them to their doom. Into the cavern below the bridge, it is partially successful but then while acting as living bait, Vax's mind is stunned by Ilted, by the Ilted and he is almost dropped to his death before Tiberius swoops in to save him. With the plan now in disarray, Vex and Kili decide to do a delve into a chas to a chasm below the bridge in spite of their companion's protest. Their insects serve them well too, though and hidden behind a subterranean waterfall, they find a cave within awaits a powerful and unlikely ally. So, with that being said, uh, that's the summary. Uh, if, you, uh, if you guys want to reread the summary, if you didn't understand what I was saying, uh, it's in the, in, in, it's in the what they call description of the episode, which I'll be leaving in the link in the description down below. So that, go check them out if you want to reread the summary. So what my thoughts are, uh, the, one of the events that, uh, there's actually a lot of events that happen here. And as you all know, another character name is uh, who's gonna be the ally that they met so, uh, will be revealed in this episode. So here it is. So they create an illusion using Killet's spell, hallucinating terrain or hallucinatory terrain, to to bait the enemy to fall to a cliff below the man uh, to below the cliff. They manage to trick the, the trolls and ogres to fall to their deaths which is um, probably a good advantage for them. So uh, six, then after that, 16 Durigars, two trolls and an ogre charge at them, which all the trolls and the ogres falls to their death. Also, four Durigars falls to their deaths as well when they did this, uh, uh, what you call, trap because of the illusion. And then all of a sudden, of course, after fighting them, the other Durigars noticed that there was a trap and started hacking and destroying the bridge where Vax was at because he was bait. Then, of course, uh, I think uh, for me, he, he should have what you call brought that car flying carpet with them because they have a flying carpet in case things didn't end well. Because he, uh, there was just a bridge and what uh, Kilt did, uh, the druid, he turned the, the cliff into a what you call an illusion. Like there's a cliff, uh, there's a land in the cliff. But it turns out the Durigar were able to figure out that something was wrong. So hope uh, I was hoping that Vax took 
the flying carpet with him so in case something happens he could just fly off from the distance but that's not the case so uh, after that uh, I think the flying carpet was in uh, what you call with Bex because he is the one who is allowed to fly or with Tiberius uh, the what you call Dragonborn so Kyulet as the Druid should have cast a strong whirlwind so this is one of my what you call what I uh, one of my uh, what you call ideas. Uh, once the director found out that something was wrong, that the what you call the cliff was just an illusion, uh, Kilit is a druid and he's good with elements and nature. She should have cast some sort of whirlwind or she could control wind. I think hopefully if she has a spell like that, then blow them all from behind like a tornado and blow them all from behind forcing them to fall to the cliff which would have, would have been a good idea right a good strategy but of course they didn't think that true so too bad so that would have been an advantage would have been an advantage and was would have been very smart and of course um when Bex uh, because uh suddenly the ill did manage to attack Bex and becomes brain dead and starts falling from the bridge luckily Tiberius managed to save him but almost endangered the carpet because Tiberius used the carpet to rescue Bex while he was falling Bex for some reason cares more about the carpet one thing I, re uh, one thing I noticed than his unconscious twin brother and she even said to Bex, uh, his twin brother you lost your flying you lost our flying carpet, you unconscious bastard. <laughs> Which was very funny. For example, Bex really loves flying more than her twin brother. But I'm pretty sure she loves her brother. It's just that for some reason she also cares too much about the carpet more than his unconscious twin brother. But hey, that's just me. That's just my opinion. So luckily the magic carpet survived the fall. If the, if the because it turns out that the part of the cliff is what you call water. Although there were parts of the uh, parts of the uh, cliff, uh, the parts of the underneath of the cliff was lava, but luckily the flying carpet was uh, because Tiberius lost the carpet while rescuing Vax. Uh, luckily the carpet fall into the water into the part where there is water that, rather than there's lava because if it fall to the lava it would have been destroyed. So yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, Bex and Kirit uses the carpet to go down the cliff to look for traps because there are tunnels underneath the uh, under underneath to look for the for their friend, which is revealed to be Lady Kima. Because once they were trying to uh, look down from the cliff, they saw tunnels. Some of the tunnels were filled with lava. Some of them were just holes. And of course. They couldn't go to the bridge because the bridge was destroyed because the jury guards tried to hack it down because they saw one of the characters which is Vax. So uh, with that being said, uh, they tried to find an alternative to go through the area. So they tried to see if they can go to one of the tunnels underneath the cliff. And then, uh, if they didn't do that, they wouldn't have found a new ally. Which is interesting, which is why I love Critical Role because there are lots of things that could happen depending on the story and you never know what's gonna happen because the story is not based on the script but based on the character's actions. If they didn't do that, then we wouldn't be, they wouldn't have seen a new ally which is uh, Illithid, another Illithid. But this time rather than being an enemy, this Illithid is on their side or should I say they managed to convince this Illithid to join their side and his name is Clarota. Clarota. So uh, they found Clarota in one of the tunnels and joined their party to fight against his brethren, who abandoned him to let him to die. Uh, abandon him and let him to die for some reason. Kilit asked the Ilted's name, and the Ilted replies that his name was Clarota. Then Kilit replies, "Can we call you Clarence for short?" This reminds me of the cartoon Clarence. Uh, if you guys don't know from Cartoon Network. Which is funny, so which was fun, yeah, which was really funny for me. But of course, Clarota does not enjoy that. But of course, they still call him Clarence for some reason. So uh, when uh, when Kilit and Vex uh, uses the when Kilit and Vex successfully uh, convince Clarota to join their ranks, 
against the Illidids the end of the regards. They fly up from the cliff, from the tunnel to the cliff to meet the others, the other their friends. Which of course Matt, the, the, the dungeon master, calls for the stop of nightmares. Which was so funny because uh, as you all know, Matt really likes messing with the cast from time to time. Which was really funny. So, uh, Clarita was cast out according, uh, when they interviewed or when when, uh, when Clarita tries to tell their, his story about the Breton or this Breton. Clarita was cast out of their hive, of, which was where he was from. He was cursed by the mark of the mark of the arcane. Or someone who probably knows the arcane arts for some reason. And they find out that Clarita's people been, has been controlled by this so-called mind. He has a mental helmet, uh, and then he wears a mental helmet to to prevent him from being controlled. Uh, or should I say, well, not to, uh, probably not prevent him from being controlled by the mind, but probably from being detected because he's connected from some sort of connection, mind connection with the others, like some sort of hive. So he's using that to make sure he doesn't become connected or be seen or probably the other way and of course Scanlan's uh, because Scanlan's uh, noticed that Clarota was injured and wounded Scanlan sings Clarota a song to heal him up in his uh, wounds uh, to heal his wounds which was also funny and I uh, and to my surprise Clarota enjoyed the song because uh, Scanlan rolled a high roll for convincing Clarota so, and of course, Clarota in the end reveals Kavard, which is uh, the one, the mind that he refers to, the one that is controlling his people. And if you guys don't know what that is, it, it's like, uh, uh, Kavard is a beholder, giant creature, floating, brain-like creature with eye, with a, one eye and a mouth, and then with tentacles with eyeballs on it and if you guys can't understand what I'm trying to uh, reveal or trying to say or trying to describe there will be a picture in picture right now what Kalvarn looks like so that's what Kalvarn looks like that Clarota uh, introduced uh, that Clarota reveals as the mind that is controlling his people so yeah that's episode 3 Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode, Critical Role Episode 3 review. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Let me guys know what you guys think about the episode. If you watch it, if you guys want to watch it, I'll be, leaving in the, I'll be leaving the link of the video in the description down below. So go watch it. And as always, uh, uh, give it a like if you enjoyed my review. And don't forget to subscribe now and be part of the plan. And I will see you guys next time with another brand new video. This is the Cool Mike signing off. Goodbye.